And we're live. Cool. Welcome. So uh, this is a video for new developers to the Ethereum JS VM project. Uh, the purpose of this video is to show you how to set up your dev environment, where to find where to find requirements for what to work on next, and how to run the tests. My name is Dan. I'm a contributor to the Ethereum JS project, and this is Casey. Casey, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Casey. I'm a volunteer um, helping out with the Ethereum JS lately and trying to get more contributors involved. Sweet. So uh, you're cloning down stuff right now, and we can do an npm install. But while you're at it, would you like to tell us a bit about EIPs and how a new developer can find EIPs to work on? Sure. Um, the <coughs> EIPs repository is over here at Ethereum slash EIPs. And the finalized specifications that Ethereum JS VM needs updating are all listed down here. So the one we're going to work on right now is 150. Cool. But it's a little confusing because sometimes EIPs are in issues. This was the original one and we're trying to get them consolidated so that the correct final specification is just in a file so you don't have to wade through the comments and the evolution <laughs> of each specification. Perfect. So the, the issues board is for seeing any context and, and evolution, like discussion between core devs. And to find the final spec for what you want to implement in our project, you're going to use this these markdown files in the EIPs folder. Yeah, that's right. Great. Let's talk a bit about the Homestead tests. Okay, so currently the Homestead tests are in a pull request right here. And with these pull requests merged, this one and delegate call, um, which, did I already merge that one? Let me see. Are you up to date? Um, we pass all of the Homestead tests. Um, so now that we have the branch, we just do npm install to install all the dependencies. <clears throat> yep. And uh, when we run, or what, what command do you use to run the tests? Should we in the package JSON? Yeah. Um, Just run npm run test blockchain. Great. And the test suite that we're using is in Ethereum slash tests. And specifically, we're running the blockchain tests and the general blockchain tests, general state tests. Yep. And, and the, the tests in Ethereum that test are cross client in that they are run in all of the Ethereum clients. So yeah, we're, that's right. we're the, this whole yeah. test suite is, uh, is the cross client consensus test suite. Okay, cool. So once those node modules are in, uh, we're going to run the tests and we'll expect to have the changes that you merged in, which means we'll get some test failures. Well, we're going to run the tests for EAP 150. So, got it. As soon as this is done, I'll show you how to change the fork configuration. 
-hmm. Okay. So now we can Now we can change the fork configuration from Homestead, which what this does is it looks at the test name, each test name, and matches with the end. So it will only run the test that ended Homestead. And we're going to update that to EAP150 so that we're going to be running the 150 test. Yep. Okay, so now we've done that. Now we can run the tests. <clears throat> and we should expect to see some some failures because we're running uh, a homestead compatible implementation on the 150 test cases. Yep. So had we had we run the original Homestead tests, then we would have gotten 100% of the tests passing. That's right. Um, like, uh, yep. This is right here with all the Homestead tests running. You can see each test case is Homestead. Right. And so they all pass. And in our case, we're yep. getting a failure because we're running on EAP150. And, and the reason why we need to show you these outputs uh, as they're saved and like not really wait for them all to run is because the test suite, the consensus test suite does take uh, a couple of hours to run. So we're, we're just showing you how to get the test running and what expected outputs are um, before we move on to more dev environment setup. So we have one failure. Uh, now let's do this, the easiest bit of E150 and just change the constants. Change the gas costs for a few opcodes. Um, so balance is now 400. Uh, ext code copy size s load to 200 and Five thousand, and then we rerun the tests. And we should hope to see um, some of the test cases which were failing now passing. And we do. Yep. And, and that, that would be the full outcome to for the changes. <clears throat> 300 failures. Yep. So without the, the change in opcode guess, we have about 1,500 failures. Once we do the simple change of changing the cost of the opcodes, we're down to 300 failures. And when we finish with these last two changes, Um, it should be down to, well, down to zero failures. <laughs> Perfect. Cool. So, um, yeah, that, that about wraps it up for, for this video. We've gone over how to run tests in the Ethereum JSVM project and how to find requirements for the EIPs you need to implement.
uh, in a future video or if you hit us up on Gitter, we can explain how to set up the rest of your dev environment and how to do debugging and um, uh, running traces on both the Ethereum JS project and the Pi Ethereum. Yeah. Yep. And the Pi Ethereum implementation. Yep. Uh, anything else you'd like to share? Yeah, just we need help. Uh, and so, <laughs> yeah. Hope to see some contributors um, join the, join us. Great. Thanks, Casey. Uh, thanks, Daniel. See you.